Hello again. In this lesson 3.4 we're going to carry on looking at association rules and the a priori algorithm. So we left off last lesson looking at an item set with three items and a support of four which means that there are uh, four instances in the data set that uh, for which those conditions are true. And uh, this item set can be massaged into seven possible rules by choosing different things on the left and right hand side. And I said that the strategy of a priori is to specify the minimum confidence level and then iteratively reduce the support until enough rules are found with greater than this confidence. And these rules have got support for. And confidence values you can see ranging from 100%, 4 out of 4, to whatever 4 out of 14 is. So for the weather data, uh, a priori first of all generates item sets with support 14 and there aren't any of those. Uh, if there were it would find rules in them with greater than the minimum confidence level and the default for Weka is 90% confidence level. But since there weren't any item sets with support 14 it would decrease the support to 13 and carry on decreasing it until it had found sufficient rules to satisfy the specified number of rules. So actually the weather data has 336 rules with confidence of 100%. So the reason why it works in this slightly crazy way is that if you started looking at high confidence rules, then you'd find huge numbers of very low support, very high confidence rules. From a large data set, you'd have massive numbers of 100% confidence rules that weren't very interesting because they had tiny support. So that's why it does this. Let's go over to Weka. I've opened the weather data, the 14 instance weather data, and I'm going to go to associate and run a priori. That's the default uh, association rule learner. And uh, this is the output I get. So uh, here are the 10 rules. The default number of rules is 10. And you can see this is the uh, support of these rules, and it ranges from 4 down to 3 down to 2. These last two rules only have two uh, instances in the data set that satisfy those rules. And the rules are all in fact 100% confident. So let's go back to the slide here. We specify the minimum confidence level, the default is 90%. Uh, we specify how many rules we want, the default is 10. Uh, we express the support as the proportion of the number of instances. And then we run the a priori algorithm several times. We start at 100% support and we decrease it by 5% each time. And uh, we stop when we get the right number of rules uh, with the uh, more than the minimum confidence level. Or we would stop when we reached another parameter, lower bound minimum support. So there's quite a lot of parameters here. Let's just uh, take a look at uh, how this works for the weather data. So on the output that I just showed you, it said that the minimum support at the top, it specifies the minimum support, which is 0 0.15. 0 0.15 times 14 instances is 2. 0.15 is the proportion of the total number of instances. And the minimum confidence is 0.9. That was set as a parameter, the default. And it actually performed 17 cycles, reducing the support each time. And just looking down uh, at the bullet point underneath, the 17 cycles corresponded to having a support of 100%, and then it reduces it by 5% each time, 95%, 90%, 85%, and so on. And it actually got right down to 15%. And when you translate those percentages into a number of instances, it was using 14 instances, 13 instances, then it did it again with 13 instances. You know, it's a little crazy on this tiny data set. It's doing a bit of extra work. But on a large data set, that wouldn't happen. Uh, and it got down to three instances. It's at 20% level. And it only found eight rules with confidence greater than 0.9 and support three. So that's why it was forced to go down to two, to, to a support of two. Right. Now, what are these item sets? Well, we can look at the item sets. Uh, and the item sets are based on the final support value. So let's go back to Weka and have a look at the item sets. Uh, here are the parameters for a priori. And uh, as I said before, there's quite a few of them. This is the amount by which the Support is reduced each time by 5%. This is when it stops, when it gets to a support of 10%. Uh, uh, 
Uh, it uh, starts with um, I was looking for things rules with a confidence of greater than 90%. It's looking for 10 rules. Uh, it's starting at a support of 100%, which is normally what one does. And here we can output the item sets. So let's output the item sets and run it again. And we've got the same rules. And here are the item sets. These are the item sets with support, support of at least two. And the way it works is it starts with uh, item sets with just one item. And these are the support for each of these item sets. And then it adds new conditions to these to generate two item, item sets. So this L, L1 here, these are item sets with one item. And down here, these are item sets with two items. And that's how it generates the item sets. It's a little bit convoluted, and it does this uh, for efficiency reasons for large data sets. Here are the item sets with three, and uh, here are the item sets with four uh, um, uh, conditions in them. And in fact, there weren't any item sets with, uh, with more than that, with uh, this support level. So coming back to the slide, uh, there were 12 one-item sets with support of at least two. There were 47 two-item sets, 39 three-item sets, and six four-item sets, and zero five-item sets, which is where it stopped. So that's how it goes through this. And for each uh, item set, it converts it into rules and looks for rules with greater than the minimum confidence. And uh, here it ended up with uh, the 10 rules that we saw before. So the way it, it's a little bit complicated, but as I say, it's done for efficiency reasons. There are some other parameters in the WACA implementation. Uh, the CAR, class attribute, always produces rules that predict the class attribute. You can filter rules according to a statistical test, a chi-squared statistical test, but that's actually kind of unreliable because we're making a very large number of statistical tests here, and significant re results will be found just by chance. Uh, we've talked about confidence. Uh, but there are different metrics that can be used for ranking rules. And uh, you can also remove all attributes whose values are all missing. Those are extra parameters. So in the activity associated with this lesson, you're going to look at the supermarket data and do some market basket analysis. This data was collected from an actual New Zealand, New Zealand supermarket. Let's just go and have a quick look at this at supermarket.arf. Here it is, and you can see there's departments here. Um, there's baking needs and coupons and uh, tea and biscuits, very popular in New Zealand. Frozen foods, razor blades, garden aids, spices, you know. So a large number of attributes, 217 attributes, and uh, uh, 4,600 instances in this data set. And there are a million attribute values if you multiply those numbers together. And in this data set, missing values are used to indicate that the basket did not contain that item. And in fact, 92% of the values are missing. So that means the average basket contains uh, 220 attributes times 8%. That's uh, only uh, 18 items, the average number of items in your supermarket basket. And the most popular items are bread and cake and vegetables and frozen foods and biscuits. So. That's a priori. It makes multiple passes through the data, generating one item sets, two item sets, and so on with more than the minimum support. And it turns each one into rules and checks their confidence. It's fast and efficient, providing that the data fits into main memory. Uh, Weka invokes the algorithm several times, gradually reducing the support each time until sufficient high confidence rules have been found. And there are many parameters that control this uh, iteration. In the activity, you'll be looking at the supermarket data, and you'll get to realize just how difficult it is to come up with uh, cool association rules in a real data set. Association rule mining is not an easy kind of thing to do. Actually, it's something I personally don't have a lot of experience with, but it's a very uh, common use of data mining. Uh, so that's it for association rule mining. We'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.